Hey, hey, good morning, church. Welcome to this week number seven. Is it week seven? I've, I've lost count after about three days. I think it's week number seven of the coronavirus uh, edition of Sunrise United Methodist Church. It is good to have you here this morning, whether you are worshiping with us live or whether you are worshiping with us later on this afternoon. It is good to have you here today. We are one, even though we are many in Christ Jesus, we are one in Christ Jesus, and even though we are scattered across our community and across this country, we are one in the Holy Spirit. I give thanks to each and every one of you who has uh, either uh, got a picture of your face or you have drawn a, a picture of your face out here in the congregation. It is good to be uh, looked at by at least some folks in the, in the church sanctuary this morning. These pictures are absolutely delightful. I want you to be aware of a couple of things. One, uh, we're going to have a Bible study with me tonight. We're going to do this on Mondays, and at least for the time being, we're going to do the Bible study at 8 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, this past uh, Thursday or Friday when we sent out the newsletter, there was contact information for that Zoom Bible study there in your newsletter that went out on Friday. If you would like more information about it, I would invite you to contact me directly at jmcallister at mysunrise.org, and I will forward that information to you. We're not going to share it on Facebook broadly uh, because we don't, want, uh, we don't want any inappropriate Zoom bombing, if you understand. Uh, thank you for checking on each other during this time. Thank you for those of you who are continuing uh, your small groups and your Sunday school classes and your Bible studies via Zoom or other channels. Uh, I've heard from a lot of you that you are doing that, and I think that's wonderful. Uh, thank you to everybody who continues to support the Holly Springs Food Cupboard. Fred Haggard told me this past week that they have seen a 50% increase in traffic at the food cupboard. So thank you for uh, your gifts of food and your financial gifts to the food cupboard. Thank you as well for your continued gifts to Sunrise. Uh, they are so helpful during these days. Uh, if you have prayer requests for later on in this service, I invite you to go ahead and type those in now uh, in the comments section of this worship service. Also, if you are watching, please let us know you are here by liking or just saying hello. And also, I invite you to share this on your Facebook page so that we can reach as many people as possible. It is good for us to be here today, friends. If I can, let me start us off with a word of prayer this morning. Let us pray. New every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are working for good in this world. Lord, help us to be here now. Help us to tune out from those demands and those things of life that call on our attention because they will be there in about 45 minutes or so when we get back from this worship service. But for now, O oh Lord, help us to tune our hearts, our eyes, and our ears to you this morning. Help us to open our hearts to what you may have to say to us this day, O oh God, that we may be strengthened and renewed in your name. We offer these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we begin our call to worship this morning, I invite you to follow along with me. Though we find ourselves isolated, the songbirds and spring flowers remind us that all creation rejoices in God's promise of new life. Though we cannot reach out and touch our friends and neighbors, we rejoice that Christ is in our midst offering grace and hope. Though we have to stand at a distance whispering hello through masks, the Holy Spirit is all around us, breathing peace and strengthening us for life. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Join us in our opening song this morning, Open the Eyes of Our Heart. my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Oh, uh -huh. 
Life-living God, like the Emmaus Road travelers, we know disappointment and despair. Like them, we know the pain of dashed hope. But you are an Easter God, and we an Easter people. You never leave us in despair, but you meet us in our darkness to bring light and hope and turn our mourning into rejoicing. Meet us on our Emmaus roads, Lord Jesus, that we might discover new life and new joy in your name. Amen. Amen. Every Sunday morning as part of our practice and as part of our worship, we go to God in prayer, lifting up our concerns and our joys. This morning, as we do every Sunday morning, we remember and we lift up our frontline responders, our EMS personnel and all our medical workers. We lift up our delivery personnel from long haul truckers to postal service workers who are connecting us with the food and the supplies that we need. We lift up our teachers who are teaching remotely. We lift up our parents who have become at home teachers. We lift up uh, our students as they try to uh, live and study well in this new way of being students during this season. We lift up our small business owners, hourly employees, and all those who are living with the impact of the sudden downturn in the economy. We lift up those who are living alone and those who are living in assisted care facilities. We lift up the 26 million people who have filed for unemployment over the past five weeks. Closer to home, we lift up uh, all of our volunteers and our friends who volunteer at the Holly Springs Food Cupboard for so many sunrisers and people beyond this church who help to volunteer at the food cupboard. We lift up Mona Sauls and Betty Penny as they are living in assisted care facilities. We lift up the family of Kim Sane this morning following the sudden death of her brother-in-law Shannon at age 48. We lift up Jan Allen and her family this morning after the death of her cousin Howard. We lift up Tim O'Daniel and his family following uh, his Aunt Grace uh, and her entrance now into hospice care. We pray for Aunt Grace and for her peace during these days. We pray for uh, Paige Molesky's father, Mike, who continues living with advanced stage cancer. For Becky Sloan as she cares for her mom, Joyce, who is on hospice care. We pray for all of our nurses, including Kathy, including Catherine and Kelsey Sane, who are working over at Wake Med, and all those who are working at various different hospitals and facilities this day. 
We, need, we continue to pray for Tim uh, Morris and his family as his uncle John is on a ventilator, secondary to COVID-19. For Martha Cranford's cousin Jeff and friend Dolores, both of whom are living with cancer in these days. We lift up Judy Claussen's friend uh, as uh, her grandmother has passed away and they cannot go to uh, the funeral. Uh, the friend's name is Julie Mize. We lift up Pat Haggard's uncle, Carl, who, uh, and Pat Haggard's family, uh, whose uh, uncle Carl has passed away. For Don Ward in deciding her mother's long-term care situation, we lift all of these up this morning. In terms of our joys today, we lift up and give thanks to God, to all of you who uh, have been making masks and sending those off to various different nursing facilities and the like. I know that there are a variety of Sunrisers who have been doing this during this time of quarantine, and I give thanks to God for you all for doing these things. And also, we continue to give thanks to God for uh, the birth of Jeffrey James Hayes, who was born back on April 15th. Uh, Mama Kate and baby Jeffrey are doing great. So is Daddy Heath and little little brother, big brother now. And Jacob is a big brother. So we give thanks to God for the Hayes family and for this joy in their life. With these, our prayers this morning, I invite us to go to God in prayer together. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this moment in time where we can gather together as friends across our community and across our country to simply worship you, to come and to sing your praises in our own houses and in this sanctuary, to lift up your praises because, Lord, we know that we are first and foremost created to worship and to praise you, and when we do, we also find strength for our living. We are certainly living in a time of heightened anxiety, O oh God. We are worried about our families. We are worried about our ability to care for our families and to provide for their needs. We are worried about our friends. We are worried about all those who have lost their jobs or those who are worried about losing their jobs. We are worried for the health of those who are around us, O oh Lord, and for ourselves also. Holy God, Watch over us and protect us. Send your Holy Spirit among us, Lord, to give us guidance and to watch over us that we may uh, live not only in the strength of your presence, but also in the hope, in the sure hope that you will lead us through this time. You know our needs, O Lord, and you have promised to always be with us, to never abandon us, but to walk with us through dark times. The truth of Scripture remains as true now as it ever was. That with you, at the end of the day, all will be well, and all manner of things shall be well. And if it is not yet well, it is not yet the end. So strengthen us, Lord Jesus. Give us strength to live day by day, one day at a time, trusting that you will provide for our needs and that you will make a way. We lift things up, these things up in your holy name, praying that prayer that you have taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, thank you for your continued gifts to Sunrise that keep our church strong and healthy. Thank you for the gifts that you are offering in your own lives by caring for your neighbors and being a tangible witness to the love of Jesus Christ for this whole world. Thank you for all that you do to serve as a witness for Jesus Christ. Amen.
working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy. chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Hear these words. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you're walking along? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he asked them, What things? And they replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe 
all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Gracious God, just as you revealed yourself to the disciples on the Emmaus Road, reveal yourself to, our, to us now. Help us to see you this day, Jesus. Open our hearts and open our ears, open our minds. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing unto you. And Lord, I ask that you speak with me and through me, but if need be, speak in spite of me. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. You remember what it was like, don't you? That first time that you had your heart broken. If we were sitting together, just you and me, and I asked you, tell me about that time when somebody broke your heart. In an instant, you could bring it back to mind. How old you were, where you were, who it was, and what it felt like. You've heard me say before that the memories that we remember the best are from times when we felt the most and nothing feels more painful than a broken heart. Dolly Parton once said it, heartache won't kill you, it'll just make you want to die. Deep is the wound of love lost, of a promise broken, of a hope dashed. It's just awful soul-crushingly awful. It changes your world. It turns it upside down. It's still Easter when this story happens. It's Easter, but not for the two disciples who were walking back home on the road to Emmaus. Cleopas and his friend would have surely been in that procession on Palm Sunday. They would have been there shouting hosannas, Hosanna, loud Hosanna to the king. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And on that Palm Sunday, they would have been thinking, finally, finally it's happening. The Messiah is here. God's promises are going to be revealed to us right before our eyes. Jesus is going to throw off the yoke of these Roman oppressors. It's, he's going to bring in this reign of justice and this reign of peace. Hosanna in the highest, indeed. But in what must have felt like a flash, Jesus was executed, put dead in a tomb, and put dead in the tomb so fast that they couldn't even have time to dress the body appropriately. And all that hope, all that anticipatory joy of what could be, what should be, it came crashing down in a pile of soul-crushing heartache. We had hoped, Cleopas said, we had hoped, the three saddest words in Scripture, we 
had hoped he would be the one to redeem Israel. It's a sad sight, you know. Those two heartbroken folks walking seven miles back home. And there comes along this random guy who comes rolling up beside them, clearly not social distancing because he is hearing what they are talking about. And he comes so close to them that he's, he's listening in on this conversation and he says, um, what are y'all talking about? Huh? Are you the only person in Jerusalem who does not know what has happened these days? It's about Jesus of Nazareth, you know? This prophet who was great and who was powerful. We had hoped he would be the one to redeem Israel. But he was put to death out by the town dump. We had hoped that he would be the one. We had hoped. The stranger we know happens to be Jesus himself and he begins to school them by telling them the story, by retelling them God's great story in Scripture. Beginning with Moses going through the Psalms and the prophet, this stranger retells the story of God's promises and God's plan. And there was something about the retelling of that great story that made the weight of the heartache a little bit less heavy and a little bit more hopeful. When they got to their town, the stranger intends to keep on walking, but these two disciples insist, no, come inside, come inside and have dinner with us. Cleopas and his friend invite this stranger to dinner. They invite Jesus to dinner, which if you go back and read Luke again, it is a thing in Luke, this time over a dinner table. If you go back and read Luke, Jesus is like, it's, he's always eating. Just normally with, you know, all the wrong folks, people like crooks and sinners and foreigners and skeptics and doubters. Jesus apparently doesn't really care who he eats with. He is just, uh, apparently he has a thing for bringing people around the table. Cleopas and his friend invite Jesus in without knowing that it's Jesus and it's there at the table where the guest becomes the host. Because when Jesus takes the bread, blesses it, breaks it, and gives it, suddenly it all comes together. Suddenly that stranger who was retelling God's story, it turns out that he was telling his story, which is now their story. And suddenly it's Easter for these two disciples. It's Easter for them. It has happened for them now, suddenly what had been a soul-crushing heartache becomes this life-changing, world-changing experience that made all the previous heartaches fade away and pale by comparison. Don't miss it. Jesus takes broken bread and mends their broken hearts. Jesus takes broken bread and he mends their broken hearts. You know, Cleopas's companion, the other disciple on the road to Emmaus, that person is never named. But he doesn't need to be because we know who he or she is. That fellow traveler on the road to Emmaus, you know who it is, right? It's you. You who have known the pain of a broken heart, you who have trusted in something only to have your trust betrayed, you who have set your, your hopes on something only to watch it all fall apart, you and I are travelers on that Emmaus road. We are the ones who are walking with Cleopas and with Jesus. It's fitting, I think, that in our current situation of having to shelter in place, that Jesus calms their fears and restores their hopes by retelling them God's great story. Because that's part of what we do for each other, right? 
That's part of why we tune in to services like this. That's part of why we gather together to read scripture together, whether in Sunday school or in small groups, whether in person or over Zoom. We gather to hear again the hope and the truth of God's great story. Yet though it's told a bunch of different ways and through a bunch of different stories in scripture, it is still the same story told over and over and over again, that story where when everything else has failed and left us brokenhearted, God shows up to do a new thing, to make a new way, and to literally bring life out of death. Go back and read the Bible again. That's the story. That's the message told over and over and over again. It's almost like God keeps trying to tell it to us until we finally get it. That the worst thing is never the last thing. The worst thing is never the last thing. And it's important to remember that now as ever. In the midst of a global pandemic, in a time when our kids are at home and separated from their friends at schools in a time when we have to work creatively from home and both be full-time parents and full-time workers in a time when our jobs may have disappeared overnight or when we are worried about the health and the safety of the people we love most. We remember that this is not God's will. This is not God's will and neither is it God's plan. But the truth of Scripture remains as true as it ever was. God is in the business of bringing light out of darkness. God is in the business of bringing hope out of despair. God is in the business of bringing life out of death. So if you're sitting there this morning or this afternoon, whenever you are watching this, and if you're sitting there with a heavy heart, Remember this, this time, though it may be dark, is the kind of time when God does God's best work. In the end, all will be well, and if things aren't well now, then it's not the end. Our job, in the meantime, is to keep telling the story. To keep reminding each other of the truth of God's story, which is in part, as on, the road to, as on the road to Emmaus, that God is not absent, but God is present. God is always present. Christ is always present, just as he was to those travelers on the Emmaus road. Christ is present. What's missing is our awareness. The Emmaus disciples were so fixed on their own disappointments and their own heartache, their own brokenheartedness, that they couldn't see the risen Christ in their midst. I don't know about you, but I'm guilty about this all the time. I can get so caught up in worry and in planning and in trying to maintain control that I miss the ways that God is moving and acting and providing that are far beyond my ability to control. How are you sharing God's story with each other? How are you sharing God's story with your loved ones? How are you checking your own disappointment and your own fears in these days to keep your heart and your eyes open to the ways that God is moving even right now? The ways that God is walking up to you to offer you hope and life even in the midst of broken heart heartedness. Remember, in the end, God's love and God's light win out. So, it, so if it feels like darkness, that means it's not the end. God's not done yet. He is still present and he is still with us and he's not finished yet. Remember that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
nowhere in scripture does it say that Jesus came to abolish heartache. Hmm. Um, that we're, we're still going to experience it. Uh, and I, I think to some extent we're all experiencing it right now. Uh, heartache, anxiety, fear, uh, all those things. Uh, but what Jesus does say is uh, to lean on him, to trust in God, to trust that uh, there's a better plan. I think uh, there's, there's a lot that can be said about that. Uh, and, and it's the reason why I chose this hymn to, to finish this service out uh, today, that no matter what's going on uh, today, no matter what's going on in, in your personal life or in your family or in your job, or if, if you've been furloughed and, and you're worried about what the future looks like, you can still lean on Jesus. Let's sing together, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. thing is never the last thing. At the end of the day, God's love and God's light went out. So if it still feels like darkness, it's not the end. Keep hanging in there. Keep holding on. Keep the faith and keep sharing the great story that others too might find strength and hope. Go forth, good friends, with this truth in your hearts. God loves you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it except to live into it, to let it live through you and to go out of your houses and into this world to live it for others. Go forth to do that in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.